In this video, I thought I'd share with you how I turned chaga, red belt of polypore, and a few other mushrooms into my daily medicinal drink. If you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, quickly, before we begin, I think it's important that I point out that the mushrooms that I'm using are all properly identified by me, and I have had them confirmed. I have used these before. I know how I will react to them. It is important that you do your own research. Just because I show you these mushrooms and you find something similar, don't take it from my video that you have, in fact, the mushrooms that I'll be showing you today. You need to do your research. You need to know if these are good for you to take. And if you decide that you want to try these, then I highly recommend that you take them in small doses to begin with to see how your body's going to react to it. It's up to you, but I'll show you what I'm going to do, and then you can decide for yourself if you want to do something similar. Okay, quickly, what I'll do is go over the mushrooms that I will be using in my medicinal cocktail today. This is not a specific recipe. I'll tell you what I do and how much and the amounts, but there is no hard and fast rules on how this is done. In fact, you know, you don't have to have all of these to make a medicinal cocktail for yourself. You don't have to have, uh, you can actually add more to what you know, what, what's here. But this is what I like to use, mostly because it's what I have on hand. So starting on my right, your left, is chaga. The well-known chaga. And uh, again, it's not a video on identification, but uh, there are, is lots of videos out there to help you identify chaga and talk about what the value of chaga is medicinally. Here, you won't recognize this, uh, but this is the birch polypore. And I do have a video, two videos in fact, on birch polypore, which I'll put a link up in the upper right-hand corner of your screen to those videos. And this is processed by me and dehydrated or dried and is ready for use in a cocktail. This one is one of my examples of a red belted polypore. And I will be breaking this up in a few minutes time and put a few pieces of this one in. And this one is known as the artist conch. And the artist conch is another one of those bracket fungi that grows on trees that has medicinal value. And finally, over here, turkey tail. I don't have a lot of turkey tail left. I will have to go looking for some turkey tail. But this is some of the turkey tail I'll be adding. Now I'm going to be breaking this down. I'll show you the amounts that I put in. Well, it's a, it's a slow cooker that I use. I'll be showing you the amounts and we'll talk a little bit more about volumes and how much you would take and that type of thing. All right, so I have my slow cooker sitting here. I have set the setting to the keep warm. I don't know if your slow cooker will have it. This one has a digital display. It's a bit older, but it's still a very functional slow cooker. If you have one of the knobs, um, I have tried this by placing it on the high setting and it will actually bring the water to a simmer boil I, that's too hot, really it is. It should not be so hot that the water is boiling because the heat might damage or even kill off a lot of the medicinal properties that these mushrooms have. A warm swim, simmer is all you need. So by placing it on the keep warm setting, this will warm everything up quite slowly, but it'll bring it to a hot temperature. As you'll see a little while now, from now, it will be steaming and that's all it has to be to extract the medicinal value. So what I'm going to be doing now is adding in my chaga. I have it broken down a little bit. Some of the pieces are still a little large. Just a word on breaking down your mushrooms for this purpose or any other method that you want to use to extract the value. It's a lot easier to do this when they are fresh and still damp and still uh, easy to break up. Some of the ones that I have here I broke up early. Other ones I wish I had broken up early because they become a lot more difficult to break down into the smaller parts. In truth, it doesn't really have to be any smaller than that because this is going to be sitting in water for a few hours. So the water will fully saturate and draw out all the medicinal value that water can draw out. And I'll mention uh, that in a second. So it, you can, don't have to have it broken down especially small. I will tell you it makes cleanup a little easier to have them a little larger as you'll see later on as well. So in goes my chaga. In goes my birch polypore. And that's the nice thing about the birch polypore. This becomes especially hard to work with when it dries out. It's as light as a feather. It feels like styrofoam now. It's easy to work with when they're fresh. Not so easy when they harden up like this. So I did cut these all up and had them prepared. 
Throw in some of turkey tail. What else have I got here? Oh yes, my artist conch and my red belted polypore. So I'm not giving you specific amounts of how much I'm putting in here because it is to a degree somewhat arbitrary as well as it matters what do you have available to you. You can put these in together. I will tell you that it probably does not matter a lot if your concoction at the end is a little weak. It will still have value to you but I will tell you this if you make it too strong you'll pay for that because if this is too strong and you take too much of it you'll be spending hours in the washroom if you gather my meaning. So don't make it too strong. In fact I think you're better off making it a little on the weak side. So what I'm going to add to this is about two quarts, just about the same as two liters of water. Now this amount I determined based on I have a glass jug that I keep everything in and store in the fridge. So that's about how much it will hold. Now actually it's a little bit more than what my jug will hold and the reason why is because what I find is that at the end of a few hours of simmering the mushrooms will soak up some of the water and I'll lose some of that water to evaporation through steam. So I'll end up with less volume than when I started with and that of course that only makes sense. So I can add a little extra water now to make up that volume or you know it doesn't hurt you can add it at the end it's not going to make a difference because this will just concentrate as it uh, simmers and we lose off some of the water. It's just going to concentrate the value into a smaller package so you can water it down a little bit at the end. Then I put the cover on and I wait. How long? Uh, I like to go about four hours. Is it necessary? Probably not. Probably an hour or so. If you leave it a lot longer, is it going to make any difference? Again, probably not. It's just going to steam off more of the water and you're going to have a more concentrated concoction at the end. Okay, that's all there is to it. We're going to come back in a few minutes and, well, if from you it'll be a few, uh, it, right away, but for me it's going to be about four hours and I'll show you the end product. Okay, well, it's actually been closer to six hours since I uh, turned the, the, the uh, stock pot on here, the slow cooker. So it uh, went a little longer, but that doesn't harm it. If anything, all it does is just reduce the amount of fluid just by a little bit. And we're going to make that up with some fresh water after we put it in the bottle. So you're not going to be able to see too much except a lot of steam, but there it is, all cooked up, quite dark. So my next step will be to take this up to the kitchen where I will uh, strain it into that big bowl that I had used uh, to add water originally. I uh, strain out so make sure I don't get any of the organic matter, the mushrooms left behind in the, in the there and I'll put it into the jug and uh, then we'll wrap this video up. Okay well there it is. That's my medicinal concoction made from chaga, turkey tail, birch polypore, red belted polypore, and the artist conch. So what does it taste like? Well, I will tell you it depends a lot on what mushrooms you put in. Chaga actually has a very pleasant taste to me and I know my, many other people feel the same way. Turkey tail, red belted polypore, and the artist conch, to me they don't have any flavor whatsoever. Birch polypore, and the, po birch polypore on the other hand, can be quite bitter. It's one of the better medicinal mushrooms for a number of reasons because it has a lot of the same qualities chaga has as well as it's renewable. It grows on dead birch trees every year. You can usually find it the same tree sprouting out some new mushrooms every year as I mentioned in the video. Bit bitter. That's why I add honey. You don't have to use the birch polypore and maybe you don't mind the flavor. In fact I've become somewhat accustomed to it. So that's about what I'll drink every other day and I have that large 64 ounce glass bottle that I'll put in the fridge and that'll last me about a week. Eh, not quite two weeks, probably about 10, 12 days. So uh, yeah, that's what I have now. So each of the mushrooms that we put in this have different effects, but for the most part, all together, you're going to get uh, a, a concoction that gives you antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, and immune support. So what else can you ask for in, in a medicinal drink like this? Now, this is not the only way you can put together a, a drink like this. You could take each of those and grind them into a much finer powder, 
put them in those little uh, gauze tea bags that you can buy at a lot of the tea stores. And make an individual cup once a day or, or whenever you feel like it. Absolutely, you can do that. It'll work just fine. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of work to grind this stuff down. For me, it's a lot easier to make this up once a week and just have it in the fridge ready to go. And I just have to pour a small glass of it and uh, take it in the morning. Usually that's when I have it and away I go. The one other method that I'll mention, it's not something I do, not for any special reason, it's just the work that goes along with it, is an alcohol extract or a tincture. You can take those same mushrooms and you can put them in an alcoholic drink, vodka, white rum, whatever your, whatever your taste, I guess, would be. Leave them there for six to eight weeks to eight weeks and they will also extract out all the medicinal value. In fact, you can do a, what they call a dual concoction where you could do the medicinal one with the alcohol and then you could steam or uh, simmer it like I did or vice versa and then combine the two of them back together to get that uh, uh, an even better quality drink because in fact you'll get some each way that you can't get the other way if that makes sense. Okay, that's all I have for you today. It was just a quick video on how I make my medicinal drink, and uh, it's, it's, it's kept me healthy for quite a while, but I do recommend that if you are going to consider making one for yourself, that you do the research on each of the mushrooms that you're going to be using in it. Make sure you've positively identified it. If anything, make the drink a little on the weak side. You can always make it a little bit stronger, but I would recommend drinking it a little on the weak side, and if you, your body tolerates that well, you can always up the the dosage a little bit. I don't believe you need much of this to support your immune system and uh, get all the other benefits from it. A little bit every couple of days is all you probably need. Okay, again, that's all I have for you today. Until next time, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.